Welcome back to part three of the Brimboat restoration. This is uh, all about the cowling. Uh, very simple techniques, very simple way of doing it. Um, if your cowling is a little bit scratched, a little bit looking a bit terrible, you can do it. Just have a look at this video. It's so simple. Right, first thing you have to do is actually remove all the decals. So here I just used a bit of a hot air gun and a metal scraper and it took it off in seconds. It was the quickest way to go. Here's three other tools you can use. It's a plastic rubber scraper, it's a fluted caramel wheel and just a standard caramel wheel. The last two are quite expensive, about $50 each. So I would go with the rubber scraper or like I did, the metal scraper was easiest. The spray here I'm using is just one of those orange citrus sprays just to help break down the adhesive. Right, here we are, sanding. So basically what you're using here is a 400 grit sandpaper just to get the top coat off and uh, you need to go down the grades from there just to make it nice and smooth. But as you see, I took the easy way and just with the orbital sander, it actually did a brilliant job. Right, to basically cover all the gouges and all the gaps and all the bits and pieces in the cowling, I used a body filler from uh, Auto Pro. It was quite cheap at $29. Makes up about it's a litre of it, so it says. Um, just add one part paste and another part hardener. You've got about 20 minutes or so before it really goes hard. Um, but it's actually perfect. And I applied it with the paint scrapers got from Bunnings. Super cheap and disposable. But what you did, the best way to do it though, is let it go dry and then peel it off the scraper. And this is what it looks like after you've added all the uh, body filler. Looks pretty horrible, but when you sand it down, it comes out spit. So here we go again, sanding, sanding, and more sanding. Basically what you're doing here is just taking off the excess body filler, leaving everything just smooth, and uh, you know, it's a, it's a time-consuming part of the project, but this is the part where uh, the paint when it sets on the cowling, will look a thousand times better if you've done the prep work properly. So take your time sanding, do it properly, go down the grades of sandpaper so you can sand out all the marks, you know, anything left from the previous roughest grades of paper. What I'm doing here is using painter's tape to just uh, cover up the rubber moulding of the cowling. Um, you can actually take the rubber moulding off but it's held in with uh, quite a few staples so it's a bit of a job taking it out and putting it back on. If you want to do a perfect job, yeah do that. Uh, if not, this is the next best way and basically you don't see it anyway. Here I blocked and sanded the cowling until basically it was completely done. But uh, the easiest way i found to actually see and find any imperfections is just to give it a, a coat of primer. I use the Rust-Oleum stuff and uh, that brings up any bits that are basically hidden from view. As you can see here after the first primer coat I found a few imperfections and a few divots and holes and pinpricks and scratches, uh, just normal stuff. So what I used was spray putty which basically gives it a nice smooth coat over everything it fills those holes and basically when you sand this down it'll give you a nice smooth coat. Here you can see the end result of the uh, spray putty. Um, I've sanded it down, it's basically ready to go and I'm using some acetone to basically just clean it up and make sure there's no grease or grime or any specks of rubbish left on the uh, cowl. After sanding, spray putty and then sanding again, there's a coat of the uh, primer basically it's nice and smooth now ready for paint. So unfortunately I got way over excited with this project and basically did uh, the first top coat without recording it. So sorry about that but this is how it looks. So far it looks okay nothing brilliant about it but it's only the first coat and it's a light coat to start off with. So after the first coat I use about a thousand grit sandpaper and some water and give it a good wet sand. This just takes off from the highs and lows, it makes it more uniform. 
and it also gives it a good base for the next coat to bond to. So here's the first coat of the Fair top coat. It's a UV based top coat so it won't crack in the sun, it's very very resilient, very tough. Now it's got a hardener in it, so what you have to go do is there's a little red cap, which you'll see here I put in the bottom of the can and you've got to push it down and it will release the hardener into the can and you've got to shake it like crazy for two minutes and then you can spray. And here's the second top coat, followed quickly by the third top coat, and this is the result. And lastly, it's the decals. As you can see, I'm using blue painter's tape to mark off where I'm going to put the decals and line them up and make sure they're all square. With these decals you can apply them dry or wet. If you apply them wet you need a bit of a squeegee. Um, you can move them around for about uh, 10 to 15 seconds to get it in the right position. Uh, let it sit for a bit and then squeegee out all the air bubbles and all the water and you should be set. And if you're running, got all my decals from eBay. So here's the final result. Came out really well. I'm really happy with it, and it makes the boat look really good. And especially how it looked when it started, with all the scratches and gouges and the paint looking horrible. It just makes it look so much better. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, next one coming out was on the hinges. Uh, that should be out really soon because I've been editing that now. And um, I just hope you have a good day. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching.